Hello, this is Mark Sabatella from Outside Shore Music. In this video, I want to give you a, a relatively quick introduction to the subject of chromatic mediums. Now, this is a subject that gets talked about a lot in, uh, especially when you hear film composers talking about music theory, because it's a really interesting sound and it can create some dramatic effects. Now, to be honest, I'm not as interested in all of the theory that one could try to build around this concept. I want to I want to show you where where this concept comes from, what the sounds are, and then, you know, you can do what you want with it. So, the idea of chromatic mediants, the idea is we're going to be talking about two chords that are a third apart. And there's a lot of variations on this idea, but specifically, we're going to be talking about here two chords of the same quality, so two major chords or two minor chords that are built a third apart. And the thing that's interesting about this is if you do that, you will discover those two chords can never come from the same key. It just works out that way. If I take a C major chord and I go up to play a major chord a third higher, that's got a G sharp in it, right? Not in the same key. Or if I play this major chord, it's got a couple flats in it, right? Not in the same key I started in. Same if I go down a third. If I go down to A, I have the C sharp. If I go down to A flat, I have the A flat and E flat. So if I go up a third, whether it's a major or a minor third, or down a third, whether it's a major third or a minor third, I'm gonna end up with notes not in the key. There's another interesting thing that happens is there's going to be one common tone. So when I played the C followed by the E just then, I did it in a uh, root position. But if I do it using, you know, inverting these notes, coming up with a voicing that has good voice leading, like going from C here to E here, I got to keep the common tone E. And same if I want to go from, C, whoops, sorry, C major to E flat, I get to keep that common tone G. Or going from C to A, I get to keep that common tone E. Or going from C to A flat, I get to keep that common tone C. So they're going to give you two chords that come from two different keys. They have the same quality to them but they come from different keys and have exactly one common tone between them. And this can just, you know, create some interesting possibilities for creating melodies, for creating um, just even just kind of string pads. You know, if just imagine these being some tremolo strings and just to create some sort of soundscape involving those two chords. Now, when you do it with major chords, there's one sound. To me, what's really interesting is doing the same thing with minor chords because these sounds get really dark. Let's check this out. Here's a C minor chord. If I go up a minor third to E flat minor, wow, right? That's dark. At least I think it sounds pretty darn dark. And we got to keep that common tone E flat. So I went up a minor third from C minor to E flat minor, but again, I did it in a way that kind of had better voice leading. Or I might go to E minor. And this is also dark, even though we're actually kind of going, we're going from a flat key, C minor, with three flats to E minor, a key, a key with one sharp. We're actually kind of moving in the sharper direction on the circle of fifths, but the fact that they're both minor um, chords still makes that combination sound very dark. And so you'll definitely hear composers playing with that pair of chords. Same thing if we go down a third, C minor to A flat minor. Hoo hoo, super dark there. And the common tone was the E flat or from the C minor to the A minor, and our common tone is the C. So, I, I personally am not interested in reading a whole lot else into this, other than that, that it's a really interesting way of giving you a pair of chords to kind of play around with that have an interesting pair of relationships, that they don't come from the same key, but they do have a common tone. And you can find composers playing with these ideas back to, you know, late, uh, well, romantic era composers, we'll say. Um, 
playing with these sorts of relationships, but it's really exploiting it is become really kind of common in the film composing world. And uh, I certainly encourage you to check out the zillions of other videos where people go into a lot more detail about these things and examples of how they might be used. But I wanted to introduce you to the sound and the bit of theory that kind of explains what is uh, what makes these sounds kind of unique and hopefully interesting. So chromatic mediums. <laughs> 